common causes of inconsistent flow besides stuff between the tines? That's the first question. Um, so inconsistent flow, it could be that the pen might need to be cleaned, you know, not necessarily stuff between the tines, it could be stuff in the feed, either um, paper fibers that's worked its way up in there, um, old dried ink that's maybe crusted up, if you've got really hard mineralized water that you've been cleaning with, maybe stuff's built up in there, that's a little rarer. Um, but um, just cleaning it out is always a good first step. Um, it could be more of a mechanical issue with the nib itself. If you've got, you know, two tines like this and they are pushed really close together where there's no, you know, um, capillary action that can come through, that is like one of the biggest issues with constricted flow is that if the, the tines, there should be a little tiny space in between those tines so that the ink has to flow properly through it. If you've got those tines pressed together like that, the ink uh, it, it's not going to flow as well. So that is pretty easy to fix. You can either flip the nib around and gently push up just above the feed here. You can push up with your fingernail and push those tines up like so to spread them out a little bit. And it helps if you have a loop. You can look and see if, you know, hold it up to the light and if you can see light coming through the tines all the way up to the tip, then you know you have a good good flow situation there. Um, another way that you can go about it, this way is a little less precise, but if you are holding the pen in your hand and you are pressing and kind of flexing the nibs out a little bit, like kind of over pressurizing it to allow those tines. Now it's really easy to overdo it that way, so you gotta be careful. But that can also flex those tines out a little bit and allow them to um, give you that space in between them uh, to help the flow. Um, another thing that can do it is, depending on how the nib is manufactured, it's not usually an issue with some of the higher end pens, but depending on if you got like an off-brand pen or something like that, um, it, you could have some imperfections in the slit. They have these um, like abrasive wheels that they use to actually cut the slit. And interesting little point of fact, you know how a lot of nibs have the hole that's right here in the nib? That hole actually doesn't really serve a functional purpose. That hole is really just there as a guide for when they're cutting the slit through the nib. It's a place for the cutting wheel to stop in a precise place, is right at that hole. A little interesting thing. But anyway, the cutting wheel, as it's cutting through, if the cutting wheel is off a little bit or it's got a little piece of abrasive that's going rogue or if somebody like, if they're doing it by hand or if the machine does something weird, um, then you could get little nicks, you know, almost microscopic, but little nicks in the slit of that feed that could cause the ink to go rogue. Um, that will increase your chance of nib creep um, and that will also uh, constrict your flow a little bit. That one is perhaps not as common um, and a loop will help you to inspect to see if that is the issue, but that, that can be an issue sometimes. Um, let's see, your improperly aligned tines, that can be it sometimes too. Usually that will accompany a scratchy feeling, so that one, usually the scratchiness will bother you more than the flow issue itself. But if your tines like this, if one of them, you know, here's your tines, if one of them is up and one of them is down, you're not getting a consistent contact with the ink to the paper, and that can cause flow issues. Um, paper fibers in the tines themselves, especially if you have misaligned tines and it's, you got one of the tines is kind of digging in and like scraping the paper as you go, paper can jam up in there and that can either restrict the flow if the paper gets jammed up too much in there and usually you can see if you've got paper in there even without a loop, but sometimes you can't always see it. Um, and then other times you can get paper fibers that jam up in that tip and it can act like a felt tip and give you this really fat swath and that is usually pretty obvious because you're like, why is this thing writing like a paintbrush? Um, so that's, that's something to watch out for. And then um, the last thing I had on here was that uh, if the ink has started to dry up in the pen. If you've got your pen that's sitting for a while, you know, the nib itself could all be beautiful. You could have a nice ink in there. But if the pen has started to dry out at all, you know, especially if you're either in a really hot, dry climate or if you're in, you know, like the winter time and you have heat blasting and it's really dry humid humidity in the air, um, then you can have uh, the water from your ink can start evaporating out of your pen and be left with more of a concentrated dye and the dye does not flow as well as the water does through your pen. So that can help to restrict the flow as well. 